this is our last se session of the series in the season. We made it. <laughs> we made it both in 2020 and 2021. Welcome to all of you who are joining us here. Welcome to those of you online. As you can see, we've got an exciting worship team this morning. Um, and so we're going to join in worship. One of the first songs, okay, so let me back up a little bit. On Sunday, we sang this song, Dr. T led this song, Ancient Words. And in it, it says, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. And I thought, that should be our theme song for Changed for the Better. <laughs> and I was thinking how this is why we do Bible study. This is why you get in the word every day. It's why you attend church and continue to learn and those kinds of things. Because it's not worth it if you don't allow the word of God to change you for the better. That's how passionate I feel about that. So much so I, I tattooed it on my arm <laughs> that went with that. But that's the, that's the message. And it says we should let these ancient words of God impart on our heart. That's the goal. That's why I care about doing what I do, so that every time we walk out the doors after we have read the Word of God, studied the Word of God, we are changed for the better for His kingdom and His glory. And the second song, Blessed Assurance, is just a tribute to our wonderful, glorious Savior that we just spent 10 weeks studying and learning and hearing about him, uh, how he ministered to people. So let that just be an anthem of your heart and singing to him. So won't you stand with us this morning and let's uh, sing together. Hey! 
up in a word of prayer this morning. Oh, sovereign God, we just love you so much. Jesus, our Savior, we are humbled and thankful and grateful for you. You are King of kings and our Lord of lords, and we love you. This morning, as we commit this time to you, I just pray, God, that you would speak through the women who are coming to just boldly share and proclaim you as God and bring all glory to your name through the testimonies. Your word tells us to testify for you. And that is what we're here for today, to bring testimony to you, our one king, our sovereign God. We love you and we surrender this time to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You guys can have a seat. So I'm going to start off this morning. Bev Lentz has asked me to share uh, just a, a brief thank you that she wanted to say. And these are from her. This is her words. She says, I just want to thank all of you ladies for being such wonderful Christian sisters. During the last few weeks since I lost my husband, I received over 60 cards, 10 bouquets of flowers, numerous texts and emails sending me your thoughts, prayers, love, and hugs that have helped me sustain me during this difficult time of losing my husband of 58 years. God does definitely provide, and he has used each and every one of you to bless and comfort me. Again, thank you. 
P.S. I also wanted to thank all of you that attended Ev's funeral. It was a great support to me, and Ev would have been very honored. So that is from Bev. Thank you, Bev, for that. And thank you, ladies, for ministering to a sister in Christ. Uh, that's the beauty of the body of Christ, isn't it? So this morning, uh, like I was praying, we have Testimony Day. That's where uh, the Holy Spirit is impressed upon people's hearts to come up and share their God story and their testimony. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Elois Curley up this morning. She's going to kick us off uh, with her testimony. So if you would give me a, give a warm welcome to Elois. Good morning. In March, Tina talked about the many miracles that Jesus performed through healing and providing. My testimonial today is about a miracle that Jesus provided to my husband, Mike, and I so that we could help a friend who loves God. This all started a couple of years ago when Mike and I went to a truck show in Dallas, Texas. Mike is a truck driver and has been for over 40 years and loves to look at nice, clean, and shiny trucks. And you that know him know this is true. He saw this very clean, well taken care of old red 1985 Peterbilt. We walked down one side of the trailer and saw painted on it the American flag and the different branches of military. It was so nice to see. On the other side of the trailer, trailer was painted Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God cre created the heavens and earth. It had a few pictures painted of Jesus doing his ministry, and then the last picture painted was of him hanging on the cross. We went up to the owners of the truck and introduced ourselves, and we thanked them for what they have displayed. Jimmy and Cynthia were the owners of the truck. They live in Tennessee. Jimmy, with his Bible in his hand, started telling us his testimonial about how he went from leading a sinful life with drugs, alcohol, and time in prison to find in Jesus who saved his life. He told us that God has provided this truck for him to go out and spread the good news about Jesus Christ and to bring people to Christ. He goes to truck stops, truck shows, finds the homeless and drug addicts, and preaches from the back of his trailer. Mike and I have stayed friends with them ever since. Mike lost his dad and his, in 2020 and his mom this year. They were hard workers and were blessed financially. Mike had told me that if he and his brothers and sisters were given any money from his parents' trust, that he wanted to help Jimmy with his truck. Jimmy wants to be able for he and his wife to be able to stay in the truck as they are out spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. So some work needs to be done inside the trailer. Jimmy often tells Mike that the devil is always trying to stop him from doing what God has put into his heart, and Mike just encourages him to stay strong and don't give up. One day, Mike gets a call from his brother, Steve. Steve told him there would be money given to all of the kids. Mike said that after he caught that call from his brother, Steve, his phone rang Jimmy. Jimmy answered it and said, what's going on, my brother? Mike said, I didn't call you. And Jimmy said, well, I didn't call you. So Mike just started talking to Jimmy about his truck. And this was after we found out that we were blessed with some money from his parents. And when was he going to go to the next truck show? Jimmy said that he needed 10 new tractor tires for his truck before he could get back out on the road. He said that his tires are bald now and are too dangerous to be out on the road. Mike told him that he wanted to buy him 10 new tires, and Jimmy said, praise the Lord, that is a miracle. He was so overwhelmed, he called his friend who was going to the truck show, I'm sorry, truck show in uh, Florida in April to tell him what Mike had done for him and to find out when the next day, when the last day of registration was for that show so that he could go. And it just so happened that Registration last day was that same day that Jimmy called him. Jimmy was able to register for the show. Jimmy got his new tires and was able to go to the show to carry on what God wants him to do, spread the good news about Jesus Christ. 
All of this was God. It all happened on the same day and the way that God wanted it to happen. And those are the tires that we provided, we we're able to provide due to the financial gift that his parents left us. So, praise God. Awesome. Isn't that incredible? God moves, God moves. We're just getting started. Thank you, Alois. I'm going to welcome up Cindy. Uh, would you give a warm welcome to Cindy, please? Good morning, ladies. Thank you for coming today. My desire is that my testimony brings all glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the one who brought me here through his spirit. I want to thank Jesus for my Christian growth and the continued blessings he has bestowed upon me. I started coming to ACC in November of 2018 and the Women's Bible Study in December of 2019. My direction in life seemed to go nowhere before coming to ACC. In fact, my mom kept talking about ACC. I guess I was not ready to attend church yet, but the Holy Spirit did not agree. <laughs> when he dragged me here, no ifs, ands, and, or buts. <laughs> I obeyed, and Satan was none too happy about that. <laughs> I have received positive feedback from the table ladies I sat with in spring 2019. I would like to thank Marlene, Rachel, and Bev, and con my condolences to you, Beth, on your husband, I mean, uh, Bev, on your husband. I hope you're feeling better. Um, apart from that, I also would like to thank Joyce McDermott um, for your friendship. I miss you, Joyce. Uh, we will meet in person soon when the Lord feels it's safe. Also, I would like to thank my current table leaders for being my mentors. It has been said that I have become more secure in myself and my abilities and less needy of people around me. Thank you, Sue, uh, Liz and Cheryl and Terry, along with the, uh, the new ladies for your continued support. These wonderful ladies have taught me to believe in the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given me. Satan loves to prowl around and discourage my walk with Jesus. You of little faith, Cindy, why don't you believe you will be raptured with, with the rest of my church? Believe, have faith, and trust in me, always. I believe in you, Jesus. It was, it was just me. I, didn't, I, I don't believe in myself, but I do now, and I rebuke you, Satan. Okay. In uh, closing, I, I feel like I have grown more spiritually as a Christian, more mature, and wanting to continue that goal. One book has really helped me through my journey, uh, which is Heinz Feet on High Places by Hannah Hernard. Uh, the main character in this book uh, is much afraid, which her family has called her, uh, named her because she struggled with confidence in herself and dealing with her family issues. I could relate to her because during my life I was much afraid, you know, much afraid to stand up and uh, stand up to people and circumstances. Um, when much afraid reached the high places after a long and treacherous journey up those high mountains, the shepherd Jesus Christ gave her a new name, Grace and Glory, for her perseverance and uh, renewed confidence. I am confident I have come a long way since reading Heinz Feet on High Places, and when I reach the high places, I will be renamed Grace and Glory. Two, uh, thank you, Sue Adams, for gifting me this visually engaging book to help me reach the highest of high places. I also would like to thank two important uh, people, staff members in my life here at church, for their kindness, patience, and mentorship. Tina, uh, thank you so much for fitting me into your busy schedule at ACC. I really appreciate it. I really have enjoyed our outings and have learned from them. Thank you too so much, Jen, for having me help you and our glorious kingdom. All the glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Oh. 
Isn't that exciting? Sisters in Christ are so great. I'm, I'm already getting chills, and we're just two people in. Uh, would you please help me welcome up Miss Gladys? Come on up, Gladys. As a young mother of three, two in diapers, and no longer attending church, I was asking myself, why am I here? Is this all there is? Dirty diapers and runny noses? Life had no meaning, and we all want to believe that what we do matters. That was God beginning to work in me. A friend, Sue, invited me to a Bible study. They had free child care. Yes! <laughs> I had never opened a Bible, much less owned one. Only a priest could understand it. That's what I'd been taught. With solid teaching and Sue's mentoring, God's spirit began a work in me, and I came to know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I was born again. My life had meaning. I was a child of God created in his image. He died for me. I had worth in his eyes. Eventually, Wisconsin weather created health issues for our son, bronchitis, pneumonia, and we decided that a move to Phoenix was in our best interest. That was reinforced by the miracles God worked to bring us here in 1977. Over the years, all three of our children came to know and walk with the Lord. In time, I returned to work full time. I was really busy. I just didn't have enough hours in the day. Soon we weren't going to church or Bible study, had no Christian fellowship, there were just not enough hours, so I left myself open to the enemy's work. I got caught up in the world. I turned my back on God. In Romans 7, Paul talks about the sin that dwells in me. Well, I let it loose, big time, for years. But God doesn't give up. I was his, and he wasn't going to let me go. The Spirit worked on me, and God said, enough. You are mine. He touched me again, and I repented. We found a church, got back into fellowship, back into the word. One of the many lessons I learned was that I cannot be judgmental of others. I've done things I never dreamed I would do. I cannot look down on another's sin. God is the judge, not me. Years later, our son turned his back on God after working with the Lord, walking with the Lord for decades. Nothing we said could change his disillusionment. I'm sure there are ladies out here today who have a son, daughter, daughter grandchild, spouse, some loved one who has done the same thing. It's heartbreaking. But God reminded me of my years of disobedience. So we prayed. I prayed diligently that God would bring something or someone into my son's life that would bring him back into a relationship. And he did. He's now married to her, and the two of them are walking with and trusting God and serving him. There have been many challenges and will be many more along the way, but I have a God who will see me through. I cling to Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. I've learned the importance of community, attending a good church, Bible study, and Christian fellowship. Oh, Sue, who invited me to that first Bible study in Wisconsin, which was instrumental in my being born again, she continues to bless my life. I call her my spiritual mom. God is faithful, right? Say it with me. God is faithful. What an incredible message for us. Are you guys inspired and encouraged by the truth so far? Me too. Okay, please welcome up Pamela. Come on up, Pamela. Thank you, Tina. I don't like being up here, but God said to, so... What a challenging and crazy, 
past 16 months we've all had, we've had both the pandemic and the different crazy things going on in this country. On top of that, we have had to deal with the challenges we have individually faced. I've come to acknowledge that this life is filled with challenges, but as Christians, we don't have to journey through them alone. I believe that God uses them in our lives to grow our faith in him and our knowledge of his love for each of us. He has certainly done this in my life. No matter what is happening in my life, I have continued to seek God's divine appointments, both as a table leader here in this ministry and wherever I go. And I'll tell you, I get blessed so much with so many of them. In February of 2020, I began one of the scariest journeys of my life, right as the pandemic was starting, scarier than having breast cancer and losing my husband. For some time, I had lived with dry macular degeneration. The day after my annual eye doctor's appointment uh, visit in February of 2020, I suddenly began losing the vision in my left eye. I later learned that my left eye had moved to what is called wet macular degeneration. Didn't really know anything about it at the time, but I learned. Basically, the macular part of the eye had started leaking or bleeding, causing scar tissue and blindness. I am now considered legally blind in my left eye, even though I'm able to see general optics, and I've learned that I can function with one eye. I began the journey with a bad set of doctors, but God led me to an amazing retina specialist who is helping me stabilize my left eye and is monitoring my right one. One of the scary things about this journey was that I am alone in the world. I do not have children, and I do not have a family I can rely on. So as I struggled to see, my lazy right eye had to step up to the plate and begin working. And I had to figure out what I would do if I went blind in my right eye and was no longer. <laughs> would you help me? I'm down there. What I would do if I also went blind in my right eye and was no longer able to live independently. God continues to guide me through this journey. My job is to trust him and to surrender everything to him. Philippians 3.8, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Thanks. Yes. Okay. It just takes an immense amount of courage and strength, and I'm so grateful to all these ladies. Thank you, Pamela, so much uh, for participating in that and sharing your story. And that's just another prayer. you got a whole group of sisters now praying for continued strength and miraculous holding on to that right eye for sight. God is able. Okay, will you please welcome up Kim? Good morning, ACC friends. A little about me. I'm Kim Eman, and I was born in a small city, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Very few people have even heard of Lake Charles until recent Hurricane Laura. My parents were born and raised there. My heritage is Cajun. My dad was Protestant. My mom was Catholic. Sadly, I grew up as a non in a non-Christian home as an only child. Though because of my grandma, my dad's mom, she put the love of Jesus in my heart. My parents moved to Las Vegas where I grew up going to school and college. I grew up with a lot of family and friends. In 1993, I got married to a native Phoenician. He was born and raised, so, born and raised here, so I moved here to be with his family. In 1994, we bought our first home here in Tempe. And in 1996, we began our family. We have three amazing children, two girls and one boy. I married into a devout Catholic family. Our children were raised in Catholic school and Catholic church. I have been blessed for the past 11 years to attend the ACC Women's Bible Study while attending the Catholic church with my family. At that time, Janet Therese was the leader of our women's study. 
through the study, I was in uh, I was in awe of how God worked in Janet's life, and I wished I could do that, have that same thing in my heart. That was the beginning of life to change for me. My biggest fear was right around the corner, which led me straight into the arms of God and His reliance. The discovery of a secret in our marriage. Women, more women, affairs, pornography, our home became explosive. I was struck by fear and anxiety, and I, I had no time to go to a doctor, but I'm sure I was at the verge of a nervous breakdown. Living in an unsafe environment and on the verge of losing our house, my only income was a part, from a part-time, little part-time job, uh, lunch duty job, school job. I became scared to death where the kids and I live because he claimed he had no job and yet him and his attorney harassed and bullied and much, much of that went on. I read an email from my kid's dad that said Kim would eventually break. But God had different plans for me. I exhausted every solution and finally said, God, I surrender. And he said, it's going to get worse in this house, but I will get you out of it. So it got super crazy to the point that I thought I was going to get hurt. And other people did too. We escaped. I was uh, recommended to go to divorce care here. This was a verse I never heard before. For I have the plans I have. For I have the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. This was my lifeline with God. Today I celebrate with grateful heart for the many people here who held me up on a cross like Jesus when I couldn't stand by myself. I would like to acknowledge them one at a time. To Julie Wood, and she's sitting right over there, <laughs> my neighbor at the time who invited me to this study to learn about Jesus and helped us escape our house. To Janet Derez, who started my relationship with God. To Sharon Lancar, who was our table hostess and recommended me to go to Bob Spears. To Bob Spears, who compassionately took many times to talk to me and recommended divorce care. To Beth Peterson, who walked by my side and gave me faith to read the Bible when I couldn't. To Brenda Bailey, who listened and taught an excellent Bible study. It helped me to be unfocused on my sorrows. To Sandy ben Benzer, who was my Stephen minister, who listened to me endless amount of times, like, to infinity. <laughs> uh, let's see, to, I see her over there too, Roxanne Amhein, who I became friends with here when she came along my side and made Jesus real. And to Georgia, who ended up, she ended up being related kind of to an Eman family, but she went to church here. She was a cousin, and she prayed for me many times, and she would meet me for lunch and listen to my story too. So, out of great darkness, God brings light. I'm grateful every day for the light that, that was shown here through God and his people. God tells us to love and to love people. I'm thankful for the relationship with God that I never had before. I'm ever thankful for the old man is gone and the new man has come. Now I know when I am weak, he is strong. Love, Kim. Thank you. Did you hear the body of Christ? Did you hear the ministry of Jesus being played out today through your hands and your feet? I hope you heard that. That was incredible. Jesus came. We just studied how he ministered to people. And he taught his disciples, and they went on and shared and taught others so much that it got to our body here. And now you all are carrying on that ministry, too. 
blessing other people. That was the that was the point. Um, so exciting. Thank you, Kim. Now, many of you have heard me mention it before, and I always men uh, say hello to our people online. But if you don't know, there is a Zoom group that has been meeting since the beginning, August. They meet every Wednesday. They watch online, and then they come together. And Donna Brock leads that group. It's kind of like having your own table uh, at the community center, but they've got they come to their own table through Zoom. And they wanted to share their testimonies and how that has helped and blessed them. So take a look at the screen and we're going to hear from our Zoom group. Okay. Hey, good morning. My name is Donna Brock and I am part of this awesome Zoom Bible study discussion group that you see here. I'm so proud of our ladies. It would have been really easy when COVID began to just stop meeting and drift away and not continue to study God's word together. But all of us here, we have pushed through and learned how to use Zoom. We have made new friends because none of us were at the same table together, really, except maybe two. We have been disciplined about watching the study online, and then we log on to Zoom, and we do our discussion and our prayer time. As a group, we have grown in our faith. We have grown in our friendships with each other, and we've grown in um, learning how to love each other and love God better. This group has helped me to feel like I belong to something. It's helped me to be connected, and it's fought off that loneliness that we all feel at times. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be part of Zoom. Carrie Lynn and Boyce. Hello, I'm Carrie Lynn Winger. This is my son, Wesley Winger and Everett Winger. And these are my two biggest reasons why I am on Zoom with the Bible study with the women's ministry this year. Uh, with COVID, I know we've all at some point been uh, sequestered home, but what Zoom's allowed for me is to, is to stay connected. Wesley here is a high-risk child with his asthma, and so I've been advised by his doctor to stay home. I also um, homeschool my children, so in addition to just the doctor's advice, also just the fact that I homeschool my boys, I'm able to educate them in the morning. We take a break so I can watch the Tina's message, whoever's messaging that morning that I log on. So they get a little recess during that time. So it's actually really been a, an added bonus because it's something I'm not sure when we go back in person if I've been able to um, manage as well with homeschooling my boys. So I'm very grateful for also since being home, the blessing of just with being with other believers and people praying for us and uplifting us. It's a truly godsend to have a connection with others and to grow with others. Thank you. Amy? Hi, this is Amy Phillips. Um, Zoom has been a great experience for me. I get to connect with other Christian women in a safe online environment, which is really important to me because last year I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so being online is, works out for me perfectly. I'm doing well, by the way. Um, sharing online, face-to-face, -face, not only bolsters my faith, it helps me to counter that feeling of isolation that I have. And silly as it sounds, since no masks are required, we get to see each other's smiling faces, which is really inspirational in itself. I think I speak for everyone in the group that through Zoom, we've all been able to make friend, new friendships, wonderful friendships that we would not have been able to make in the past. So thanks for letting me share. And I highly recommend that if you have an opportunity, if you need it, try Zoom for one of the Bible studies. Chris? Hi, my name is Chris Kalbeekin, and I just wanted to express how blessed I feel uh, being a part of this Zoom group, and I look forward to it every week. We get to share our faith and immerse ourselves in the Word of God, and we have great support with each other, so that's really super wonderful. A uh, quick shout out to Donna Brock, our faithful Zoom leader who got us all together. Thank you, Donna. And also to Tina and Jen for keeping us all in the loop um, with all the ACC information. So thanks again, and... Uh, hugs to all of you out there in ACC um, Bible study land. <laughs> Joyce? Hi, I'm Joyce McDermott. Uh, during the past two years, I've been 
had a brain problem caused by lung disease. I want to praise God for taking care of me and I'm doing much better. I want to thank God for giving us our computer technology, which lets us meet together on Zoom to discuss Tina's message and to pray for each other. Thanks to all my friends for continuing to pray for me. I've had six other major blessings in the past two years where God has helped me. In one, he provided an oxygen tank for my paramedic neighbor when the oxygen company failed to deliver my initial tanks at home the first day in the hospital. A good friend lent me an oxygen concentrator, which allowed me to go out and about and possible fly someday, hopefully, to see my kids. One evening, I had to go to the emergency room. When our car battery failed to start the car, our neighbors said, just take his car. What great neighbors. We've got our COVID shots in February at our local fries, one mile from home, without out having to wait in a long line. When I needed a lung biopsy in the hospital, the surgeon was able to do it in five days, and not how long it's been during this COVID. I'm so thankful for ACC online church services then and the online women's Bible study with Tina and all my new friends on Zoom. Patricia? Hi, I'm Patricia. I've been in this Zoom Bible study since uh, it, Donna started it back in uh, last August. So thank you very much, Donna, for hooking us up every week. We hook up to the Zoom link. Uh, she gives us the link on Tuesday, and then we are able to log on on the Wednesday. So anyway, I love it here. I love this study. I love women. Um, it brings us together every week. We share the lessons of the Bible. We learn from each other. We support each other. And I've seen how God has moved in all of these women's lives, you know, from their stories every week. Um, and I know how he has, you know, moved in my life as well. And then uh, the way Zoom is set up, you focus only on the person who's doing the talking. So there's nothing taking your attention away from that, which I think is pretty super. Um, so in the time when we couldn't gather physically together, we have been, had this alternative, this great alternative called Zoom. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Janet? Thank you for making Zoom available during these past months. Attending class in person has not been recommended by my doctors. COVID-19 restrictions have put a stop on many of my favorite activities, especially attending in person our women's Bible study. Because over the years, through our in-person meetings, I've met such wonderful women. And to not be able to be together has been disappointing. However, our Zoom group has been such a big help. Donna has faithfully set up each meeting and our gals in the group have been wonderful to zoom in. I look forward to seeing my new friends in, in Zoom boxes. Uh, it's interesting how we can adjust to change, even at our generations, they are our age. Anyway, Tina, thank you for recording the lessons and making the handouts available to be printed at home. You and Tricia and, and Brianna this morning have given uh, inspi inspiring and interesting lessons, which now I can watch and rewatch online. You are a blessing. Thanks so much for having us, and we love Zoom. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, we love you guys watching on Zoom. So thank you so much for sharing your testimony and for staying disciplined and committed. A huge shout out to you. So we love you. We miss you. And we know that we'll see each other as this continues to roll out and play out because God is good and he is faithful. So thank you for your faithfulness to him as well. Okay, will you please welcome up Denise? <laughs> Good morning, sisters. Um, again, I'm very nervous to be up here, so bear with me. Um, I grew up Catholic. I believed in God, loved God. I believed in the Holy Spirit. I knew, um, I believe, I knew about the Trinity, um, but something was still missing. In doing my um, testimony today, I could start anywhere from when I was four years old to present. But what I'm going to do is go back with the last four and a half years because they have been the most beautiful to me. In 2017, um, 
I had surgery and I had to stay home for six months and I became very, very depressed. Um, I didn't want to leave the house and when I left the house, I put on that fake smile. You know, I just was not myself and luckily, um, well, in 2017 of October, my husband went to Israel and I was going to tag along on that one. And I went with them. We saw the sights and everything. It was just the most beautiful thing. I cried at the Sea of Galilee. I come home and I'm still sad. I'm still very sad. Um, I'm just existing, I feel like. And then come 2018, I'm diagnosed with PTSD. So uh, I finally have a name for what's going on. So I'm um, still very sad. I'm going to Bible study. I'm praying to God, please help me get through this. You know, what is going on? And I have a calling to go do a pilgrimage. And I do my pilgrimage. I hiked across Spain. So that was something very important to me. I come back home and people ask me about what's, you know, how was it? And I was, it was great, but something was still missing. And come 2019, I'm called to do a mission trip in Uberlandia, um, Brazil. So that was phenomenal. I, I didn't know what I was doing, but God had me go there. But I had my testimony. I did have my testimony. Um, now, but something, um, I did have my testimony, sorry. But now I'm going to take you back to 2017. 2017, um, John 3, 7, you should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. I was baptized in the Jordan River. I was born again. In 2018, Matthew 16, 24, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. While I was doing my pilgrimage, I was carrying 25 pounds on my back every day. I was walking 12 to 15 miles a day, and for 57 days, I was by myself with God. I believe I was, I picked up my cross, I denied myself, and I was walking with God. 2019, First Chronicles 16:8. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make me among the nation what he has done, what he has done, what he has done for me. I told my testimony about my childhood to strangers. I was terrified. I wasn't trusting in myself. I had to trust in God that the Holy Spirit would work through me. And there I felt it. There it was. Luke 1 45, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Since I was four years old, I always knew God was with me. And truly, I tell you, I figured out what was missing. Ladies, I wear white today because I now have the blessed Holy Spirit in me. Thank you, and God bless you. There's a preacher and evangelist right here, my friends. That was awesome. I love people. Pro that's testified. The Bible says testify about me, and that's what we're having today. Uh, certainly, last but never least, uh, would you please welcome up Miss Casey. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Casey Lloyd. Um, Tina has graciously allowed me to come share with you my testimony about another wonderful ministry that ACC offers the women of our community. Um, some of you have already heard of MOPS, but for those of you who don't know what MOPS is, MOPS is a group for um, moms in the early years. It stands for Mothers of Preschoolers, and it's for women from pregnancy to having one or more kids, five or younger. Um, Funny enough, my testimony of MOPS is also my testimony of finding a church home here at ACC, and that all started three years ago. One evening after putting our daughter to bed, my husband looked at me and said, I have no friends. I said, me either. And I prayed. I prayed God would bring us friends who were um, in the same phase of life and loved Jesus. A few months later, we were invited to ACC by two separate people who came here and didn't know that they were inviting us. Um, at the time, I had an almost two-year-old daughter, and I was expecting my second that October. The first Sunday we visited, 
I was approached by a lovely young mom who asked me if I'd ever heard of mops. Um, I thought she was talking about the cleaning instrument and I was a little puzzled, but then she explained what it was and invited me to join that summer when they started up again. Um, it's a very confusing name, especially for moms. I politely told her maybe, but in my head it was no. Um, but this girl was very persistent. She invited me every Sunday that summer, and by the last week before it started, I caved and decided to sign up, um, mostly because I knew she was not going to stop asking me. Uh, that first meeting, I knew in my heart this was God's answer to that prayer I prayed a few months before. Um, I had my second daughter that year, and the difference was night and day. When I had my first, Eliza, I felt so alone. I didn't have a community. I had very few people to help or reach out to. But when I had Rory, my MOPS leadership set up a meal train for me. They announced her birth on Facebook. My table group all became dear friends checking up on me. I didn't even miss a meeting. I had her and came back the very next meeting. Um, and during the MOPS meetings, my mentor mom, Amy Phillips, who we saw and is online, she would hold Rory while I got to eat and have a hot cup of coffee. Um, my daughter had her first experience with childcare through MOPS Kids, um, and it was a wonderful experience for both of us. Through MOPS, I was able to get to know a lot of women who attended this church, and our family got very plugged in here and very comfortable getting involved in the church. Now, three years later, and that mom who invited me is one of my dearest and closest friends. I have learned and grown so much in my faith and gotten involved in the church. Um, I have gotten the amazing opportunity to serve on MOPS leadership the past two years, and um, I will continue to serve as MOPS coordinator for next season. The Lord is working through MOPS here at ACC in amazing ways. My testimony comes with a little bit of a call to action for you ladies. Um, as MOPS leadership gears up to uh, plan for our next season that starts in August, um, I have a few ways that you can serve and get involved with these young moms and their kids in MOPS. The number one way is pray. Um, pray for these moms who are coming in. The great thing about MOPS is that it's a community outreach. So we are inviting moms from every background, every, um, every background, every stage of life um, in that young, raising childhood years. And um, what's great about that is some of them might not be the women that you see on Sunday mornings. Um, so we want to be able to uh, share with them Christ through our love for them and building that community. So pray for those moms who will be signing up and joining us in August. And also pray for our leadership team that um, we continue to make Christ the focus of this ministry. The second way is to volunteer. Um, we're moving our MOPS meetings back to Friday mornings with child care. I know Gladys said that was what got her. Um, that it's a huge drawing point for a lot of these moms. So that child care is very important. But the other thing is, is again, some of these kids are not kids you'd typically see um, in Sunday school. So for many, this might be the only time that they ever hear about Jesus. And that's a really cool opportunity for us and for our child care volunteers. Um, the second way is you could become a mentor mom. If you've been there in those little years and you survived, um, come and encourage the other moms. Um, if that's something that interests you, talk to me or Trisha, who's our lead mentor mom. Um, and then the fourth way is come. If you are in those younger years and you're a mom who this group fits your description and you want that community and those friendships, um, or just that time to have a hot cup of coffee, please join us. I have flyers in the back and um, information on it. And if this is not your season of life, chances are you probably know someone in this season of life. So take a flyer and invite them. Um, they might really need this opportunity. Um, we start in August, so you have all summer to pray about a way you could possibly serve. 
Um, and again, there are flyers in the back with my information. If you're interested in getting involved, um, my information is there. And feel free to come talk to me afterwards. Thank you, ladies. Weren't you guys blessed today? So glad you came with all of the testimonies. Um, just to kind of follow up and piggyback on that, we wanted to send you, you should have come in and picked up a spiritual gifts packet. And if you're online, this is on our webpage as well. You can find it in two places. It's under the Bible Studies tab or it's under the Handouts tab. So once you go to our webpage, azcc.org slash women, then you can find uh, our, the spiritual gifts test. Jesus came and he ministered to people and he embodied all all of the gifts. He was all of them. He embodied them. He is them. And he modeled them. He demonstrated them. And we just spent 10 weeks reading and learning all about them. And when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you too become blessed with spiritual gifts that he gives you and bestows upon you for the use of the kingdom, to grow his kingdom for his glory. And you may have taken one in the past, or maybe you've never taken a spiritual gift. So we wanted to give you the opportunity to take a spiritual gifts test. You can see it's very easy here. You look at one through five, if something's highly characteristic of you or not at all. You're not supposed to think through this too much. Don't look and go, hmm, what do I think about this one? I'm a five, no a two, maybe a four, I don't know a three. Pretty much whatever kind of first comes to mind, they say, is likely your best answer with that. And then if you look at the, towards the last page, it tells you the number, like item number, item number. You write how, what point value you gave. So for item number six, if you scored yourself a two, you write a two on that line. And then uh, like you, if you're looking at that back page for leadership, item number 16, if you scored yourself a five, you give yourself a five on there. And at the end, you add up the points going across. And you're, usually your top three, top four with the most points indicates your, helps you identify, if you will, your spiritual gift. And then on the last page, it tells you what that gift is. So once you do that, if you're interested, if you have a gift of mentoring or leadership or things like that, and you were inspired by Casey's testimony and sharing about MOPS, that might be a place where you get involved. But if you're not really sure, please email me. Say, hey, Tina, I took the spiritual gift test. These are the top three to five that came out. Could you help me find a way on how I could use my gifts for the kingdom? And I would gladly meet with you, visit with you, talk with you. You're welcome to reach out to Tricia as well. She's more than willing to connect with you for that as well. So uh, any way that we can continue to help um, just challenge all of us to walk out these doors using the gifts that the Spirit has given us for God's kingdom and glory is always a good thing. Let me um, close in prayer, and then I'm going to share a few announcements. But I just want to close our time together now. Lord God, thank you for the beauty of who you are in your truth, your word, your faithfulness. We heard it all today in these women's testimonies. Thank you for their courage. Holy Spirit, thank you for impressing upon their hearts. Thank you for giving them strength to come up and share and testify to you. Each and every one of them had something special to share. And it was all for your glory and your kingdom. So I thank you for that. I pray that each one of us are inspired and changed for the better. Help us now as we identify our gifts and learn those. Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom and the discernment and knowing what that looks like and how to use that in our workplace, in our family, in our church, in our friendships, all around us. We surrender it to you. Thank you for our time together, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So as we uh, look at our announcements here, just the last reminder before we cut to the summer that, again, the, the Bible study is in person only. There is a place to sign up online, but that's just to register. But actually, it'll be in the G building, G2. It's an in-person only study, both at 9 a.m. or 6.30 as well. And so that kicks off June 2nd. If you want the book, you can sign up for that. We're going to be ordering books this week, so if you haven't signed up, 
up to indicate you want to book, please make sure you sign up there. Or uh, if you go online, please be doing that in the next couple of days. Um, and then we will start at June 2nd for that. Again, you should have uh, picked up a save the date if you came in today as a flyer to remind you that our kickoff is August 18th. And then the last little handout you picked up is a card. I don't have it with me, but you should have gotten a little card for those of you who came in person here. We're thinking about doing a retreat in the fall, the first weekend in August, and we're trying to just get a feel, a general idea of about how many might be interested in participating. So if you came here in person, if you could fill that card out. Now, if the answer is no, you know for sure, just retreats aren't for me and I'm not going, you don't have to do anything with that card. Unless you wanna give it to somebody and say, hey, is, does this interest you? And then you can bring it back to me or at, uh, at the church sometime. But um, circle yes, yes, definitely interested means Look, I really want to go. It doesn't mean you're committed or signing up. It just means, yes, this is high interest to me. I really want to go. Maybe is just saying, I have an interest, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm willing to think about it. <laughs> so that's where that is. And it'll give us an idea so we know um, approximately how many beds and things like that. And just to let you know, the retreat is up in Prescott at Chapel Rock, and it's in more of like a hotel room where you room with one person. They have beds, not bunk beds. It's regular beds. It has a shower. It's just like a hotel room, very similar to a hotel room up there. So that's kind of the sleeping arrangements if that makes your decision different, <laughs> as I know it might. For those of you online, if that's something you might be interested in doing, just send me an email and let me know. Say, hey, I might be interested in the retreat in the fall. Again, that would be October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd if we make that happen. So, all right, ladies. Yes, uh, we are going to close out our time. Thank you so much. Remember, for those of you who are here at the community center, we have breakfast burritos this morning. And so please feel free to join us, grab a table, meet a new friend, say hello to somebody, and enjoy uh, Cinco de Mayo with some breakfast burritos. Thank you so much for coming this morning. God bless the rest of your day. Thank you.